This is a real photo of astronaut Bruce McCandless floating 320 feet or around 100 meters away from the space shuttle without any tether connection. In 1984, he was on a mission to test a space jetpack system. So he stepped out of the Challenger space shuttle and flew away from the ship into the abyss of space. When he was asked what it felt like, he said the single thing that disturbed me the most was when I got away from the shuttle, I got extremely cold. I can't help but think about the silence. Just you, alone in space. They are so massive that not even light can escape their gravity. They consume every planet and star in their way. You are orbiting one right now. They are black holes. Due to the strong gravity of a black hole, sometimes many astronomical bodies including stars in the vicinity are pulled too close to it. Then what happens is actually the most interesting part for the astronomers. As the wandering star approaches the black hole, the black hole's gravity begins to stretch it out until it becomes a long river of hot gas. The gas is then whipped around the black hole and is gradually pulled into orbit forming a bright disk. This process is formally called a tidal disruption event, and its study is important to better understand what happens to material that's captured by these black holes before it is fully devoured. I want to show you just how big black holes can really get. First, we see the sun, before meeting this black hole. Let's pop into view. The larger of the two is the black hole at the center of our galaxy, Sagittarius A star. You are orbiting this one right now. This one here is the black hole inside the Andromeda galaxy, while this huge one is Sinus A. We pass M87, the black hole we famously imaged, before coming across the true beast. TON618, one of the largest black holes known, with a mass of 66 billion suns. <laughs> Hey there, are you having a good day? Well, fuck. The first stop in our journey is, of course, the star at the center of our solar system, the Sun. All stars are huge spheres of hydrogen and helium that are constantly undergoing fusion reaction. This process creates a tremendous amount of heat, and our sun is over 5,000 degrees Celsius at its surface and 15 million degrees at its core. Going outward, the closest planet to the sun is Mercury. Moving on, the second planet is Venus. Venus is better known as Earth's sister planet as it's almost identical in shape and size, but is way hotter. Earth is of course the third from the sun and our home planet, and today our flagship station is located just 400 kilometers above Earth's surface. Known as the International Space Station, this is the farthest into space that humans are permanently established. Astronauts are typically situated here for up to a year at a time, where they're allowed to perform cool experiments until their bones disintegrate and they must return home. Mars, our second nearest planetary neighbor and homeworld of Elon Musk, is not the most habitable, but it is the closest thing we have to Earth. 
In between Mars and Jupiter is the asteroid belt. The asteroid belt holds many resources, and after expanding nearby, we might be able to mine them for minerals and Vespine gas that we can use back here on Earth. Jupiter, also known as Thick Saturn, is a lot like Yo Mama, because despite having to constantly withstand a very turbulent environment, it works tirelessly to provide a stable home for more orbiting bodies than any other planet. Saturn is by far the best looking planet in the solar system. Okay, the next planet is Uranus, and of course we all went to school, we all know the joke, so really I just want to say I think it's unfair that Uranus is given such a hard time, just because it's so easy to make fun of. So, this is Neptune. This planet is the final gas giant and is notable for having an elliptical orbit, which means once every few hundred years it goes from the eighth planet in the solar system Finally awake. 